So the, the neonatal newborn period is actually defined as anything from birth to the end of the first month of life, and so that's the definition. I will be talking about infants as well, and infancy really is birth to a year of life, so um, those are the sort of two things. So um, how common is um, LCH in the newborn period? So Dr. Isaacs um, looked at, uh, published last year a series where he went to the literature to look for any reference to LCH in the, in the newborn and then um, also looked at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles where he worked and Children's Hospital of San Diego. And he found 221 patients um, that were published or, or from his hospitals. And as you can see, it's the same sort of um, uh, diseases that you will see in regular um, in histiocytosis in general, so LCH being the commonest, then HLH, and then juvenile xanthogranuloma, and that would be the sort of thing you would see in the childhood period. So 47% um, in the newborn period were LCH. Um, Dr. Minkoff, who is in the audience, um, I'm very grateful to because he published the results of the big Austrian, German, Swiss, um, and Netherlands group, the subcenter of the Histiocyte Society, um, which the data bank is in Vienna. And he took the, the patients that were enrolled on the various studies um, and took only those patients because the data was best for the patients um, in those groups. So that he found 1,069 uh, 1, patients with LCH enrolled in the two big German-Austrian studies and then the two first Histiocyte Society studies. And so between June 83 and March 2001, there were 1,069 patients. And for all of them, they not only had the date of diagnosis, but this very important thing, which I've heard reference to many times in the, in the talks that you people gave, which meant that the, the difference between the diagnosis date and the date where the actual the first symptom occurred and of that 1,069 patients, 6% presented in the newborn period with the very first symptom in the newborn period, that meaning in the first month of life. But as you can see, only a third were diagnosed in that first month of life, and two-thirds the diagnosis was made later. And um, I actually took out the, this data because I thought it was too long, but basically um, there was an average of two months um, delay to the first diagnosis. That was the average Average, but there were there were there were patients up to eight years later that were diagnosed, but most of them were diagnosed relatively early because, as I say, the average was two months. Um, so, is this different? You heard Dr. Um, Echler this morning um, with a general overview. Does the newborn period is it different from the others? So, there's a number of difference from the older child, and this is the first and very important one. And this is now three the th three different series. And as you can see, for all of them, multi-system Langerhans cell histiocytosis is much commoner in the newborn than you would expect in the older child, where single-system bone is by far the commonest disease. So, and, they, and they're relatively similar, the, the three series. So that's the first big difference. Multi-system is much commoner, meaning many organs involved. What about other differences? Well, the second big difference is that skin disease is the commonest organ, not bone, in the newborn and very young child. And as you can see, if, if single-system LCH in the newborn, 92% of them had skin rather than bone disease. And of the multi-system patients, 86% had skin disease. And interestingly enough, if we look at the other things we all deal with, which is leukemia, um, neuroblastoma, the other malignancies, um, when you get skin nodules in those diseases, they tend to be in the newborn or very young baby period. And there are some theories about why skin. One of the theories is that it's, uh, it's a, an extra bone marrow organ in the very young fetus. In other words, it produces blood cells in the, in the fetus and very young child. And maybe that's one reason why you get more skin. Um, it's hard to know but certainly skin disease is the commonest organ and I'll of course come back to a little bit on the skin. Um, the, the third thing that's really important is that most of the multi-system patients in the newborn period have risk organ. Now the risk organ for people who don't know the Histocyte Society protocols like LCH3 is defined really as organs that could be the involvement of which could be life-threatening. And that basically the important ones are really liver and spleen and bone marrow or blood, bone marrow blood. Um, lung is included there. Um, it, there's a lot of discussion about whether if 
it's lung alone in the child, whether that really should be included as a risk organ. But in children, it's very rare to have lung alone, so it, it may be a moot point. It's, of course, much commoner in the adult, but that's a different disease. Um, so in the two big series, um, this is the risk organ involvement. So somewhere between then is, is the correct thing. So... And again, looking at the newborn, the infant up to a year, and those over a year, um, you can see the various, the most of the kids are over a year, but nonetheless young children. So the average age was 5.6 years um, in this group. Um, and as you can see, single system really increases over the age of a year. So most children have single system disease when they have LCH, but most young children have multi-system um, disease and the risk organ involvement you can see most of the young children have it and the older children less common even if they have multi-system disease so just to summarize that the younger the patient the more likely they are to have multi-system disease and the younger they are, the more likely they are to have risk organ involvement. And that, of course, translates into this, which is that the mortality is, is higher in the newborn with multi-system disease. Single system disease, are very good. And in the other series, it was 92% if they're truly single system. But multi-system disease in the newborn does not do as well. So overall, if you have single system, in the, even in the very young child, you have a very high chance of being alive at, at five years, whereas the multi-system babies, the probability is just over 50%, and that's certainly different than the old child with multi-system disease. And this is from Dr. Minkoff's article, and this shows you the probability of survival um, and by age. So the, the older children, very high, 80%. Yeah, that's the whole group of patients now, multi-system and single system. If you're an infant under a year, it's in between. But if you're a newborn, it's, it's, uh, it's fairly significantly lower. Um, if, if This is all multi-system, right? Was this only because they have many more risk organs? And they looked at that. So this is only risk organ patients. And the same thing held up. So even though these will have risk organ disease, the chance um, is still less if you're a newborn um, of surviving disease um, if you have risk organs. So there is, unfortunately, a bigger risk to the newborn, even with multi-system disease. So what about this thing that a number of people talked about this morning, which is the skin-only LCH in the newborn? So we've heard that it's the commonest single organ disease in the newborn. Um, and can present, um, uh, of course, with, with just skin alone. Now, there is this thing called Hashimoto Pritzker disease, and I'm sure people who have babies with skin only have heard of this. So in 1973, these two gentlemen, Hashimoto and Pritzker, described this unusual form of skin LCH occurring only in young infants, and all of them disappeared by themselves. So everybody got really confident in skin-only disease. You don't need to worry about it. You know, do as little as possible, and everybody's fine. Um, the problem is, really, they, you cannot really distinguish skin LCH from what they called Hashimoto Pritzker disease. And I would have to say that I've presented this in big medical meetings, and occasional dermatologists will get up and say, that's nonsense, they can tell. Well, most of the literature, big series, will say you cannot tell, not clinically, and certainly not pathologically, because the cells are all the same. They're all CD1A positive. They're all S100 positive. They all have burbic granules. Um, so you really cannot tell pathologically. And even series where they've done much more intricate biology on the cells, they came out the same.